Tiny Lab build site. We're taking a break from building for a minute because we want to actually test our work. This is incredibly important and it's one of the reasons that you can prove that we are doing what we set out to do. Otherwise, you just move into it and you hope and then you'll find out in a few years. Well, did we actually achieve it or not? Let's find out during the process. So that's why we've got the blower door set up behind me here. That's the big red door. That's a RetroTech 5000. It's a brand new model. Uh, this is gonna be a pretty cool test because we can do it from here while I'm standing all the way away from it. So where we're at in construction is, as you can see, we have the sexy black shroud over everything. That is our weather barrier. It's prohibiting water, uh, and air from coming through that wall without our intending for it to, like by making a hole. Uh, it also is going to control the vapor movement. This is something that a lot of people get confused about. They think that you need a vapor barrier. In general, I like to consult uh, my clients to make sure that they never put a piece of plastic in their house because plastic, if you live in any place where there is both a winter and a summer, is gonna be bad because it's in the wrong place half the time. This stuff is very cool because it's vapor open. It allows water vapor to come and go, and that's what we want because water vapor is like a teenager. If you stop it from doing what it wants to do, it's probably gonna find a way to piss you off instead. Uh, so in general, just let it do what it wants to do, slow it down a little bit, that's fine. So that's what this is doing. There is nothing on the inside. We have the framing exposed. We've got our shower uh, in there because we needed to fit it in before we started framing up the bathroom wall. But that's basically it. What you're looking at is an in-process, rough-in test. Uh, before we start installing any of the insulation or the plumbing or anything like that. So we've sealed up all the intentional openings in the house, the plumbing holes, the electrical holes, stuff like that, uh, with tape. And we're just testing to see all the unintended air leakage. Now, in order to get a good air seal, what a lot of people will do, whether it's in a normal house or in a tiny home, will uh, go and buy a spray foam can. Now, if you are going to buy a spray foam can, you need to get one of these guns. They're not very expensive, generally less than 100 bucks. Um, and what it'll do is enable you to have a lot more control over where this spray foam is gonna go. Because when you go to the store and they want to sell you a can with a little straw attached to it that you just screw in the top, don't do that. Don't even waste your money or your time. It's gonna be a total wreck and it won't work. Uh, so I've actually taught classes on how to apply this stuff and that is part of the reason why I decided not to use this. Because in the first place, this foam uh, has a little bit of skin on it, but if that skin gets damaged at all, then we have a little bit of an issue because the foam is really good at holding water. So if it gets wet, which we have a tiny house that's gonna be traveling all over the country for the Proof is Possible tour, I'm assuming everything in here is gonna get wet at some point. I want it to be able to dry out and not hang on to that moisture like a sponge. So that's why I'm not using spray foam uh, on the underside of this or to do any air sealing. I am using instead really cool, sexy tape. This tape is uh, from Germany, but you can get it in the States through 475 Building Supply. Um, it's from Proclima, and this does all the air sealing, and this will seal holes through the uh, building. So if we're making holes for ventilation chutes and plumbing and stuff like that, it's got a really cool, nice rubber gasket. It's very clean. You do have the back of the tape that ends up, you have to throw away, but that's it. And in Europe, this is what they're doing all the time now. It takes a little bit more time, and it's a little bit more finesse, but it works, and you don't have a bunch of goop squeezing out everywhere they have to shave off. So now that we have that all clear, we are going to test how good a job we did. I have my app that's gonna run the blower door back there. What I'm gonna do is suck on the house and I'm gonna be sending air out through this fan uh, to a certain pressure that all houses get tested to, which is 50 pascals. You don't have to know what that means. Now you can hear the fan drive up, and now it's gonna drive back down. Which is interesting because what we're doing right now is this really bizarre test. This isn't actually real. What we're testing is a very, very worst case scenario. We've got plastic covering all the windows. We have duct taped the plastic to the weather barrier. That's insane because duct tape does not do a good job of air sealing almost anything. But I don't want to damage my weather uh, barrier. So we're gonna try and rip that back off right away as soon as we're done with this test. What I have right now is a reading of about 160 CFM. Now my final goal for this house is gonna be about 20 CFM, if I can get to passive house levels. Uh, right now, that's a lot leakier than what my goal is, but that's okay because I've got the plastic up, we're gonna get the windows in this week, and I'm gonna test it with the windows. Now I can start interpreting this because that number, a number is a number is a number, on a million, 200,000, doesn't matter. 
what I need to do is interpret what that number means to my house. So I have put my air changers per hour uh, number into here, and that's based on the volume of my house. Now this number is gonna be very punishing for my house because my house is very small, it's got a huge amount of surface area for the amount of air it actually holds. My air changers per hour right now at rough end with plastic over the windows is 4.7. That's great because when we came from Chicago back in November, the code there for a new house, when it's done, is to be tighter than five, less than the number five on this scale. My house doesn't even have uh, the interior plywood, it doesn't have any insulation, it doesn't have any of the interior air sealing, and it already wins. This house would be passing in Illinois right now, and that's one of the best energy codes in the country. Uh, now, that number, like I said, is very punishing. What we can do also is look at how many uh, CFM per square foot we have. And this house has about a thousand square feet of enclosure surface. That's the walls and the ceiling and the floor all added up together. And what we've got is 0.14 CFM per square foot of area. That number I'm a lot happier with, and that's the number that I'm gonna try and get uh, tuned really well so that we do well because the way that most people measure this is based on a ridiculous metric that doesn't matter for a house this size, which is air changes per hour. That's dumb and eventually the energy code writers will get that and they will incorporate the new number into their calculations, which is actually the way that it is for commercial codes. So sorry to be so technical, but this is really important for every person to get done on their house. It's actually going to be law in every state by 2017. So you need to get more familiar with this test. You need to ask for it. If you're buying a new house, make sure that you ask, what is the blower door test number on this house? Um, and when you're getting home improvements done, go ahead and get a before and an after just to make sure that your home improvement project didn't make your house leakier than it was before. So I hope that this has been informative for you. We're gonna do a lot more work with the blower door as we go throughout the process. And so please stay tuned. If you have any questions about this, uh, please do ask in the comments section. In fact, this entire blow order test goes out to Julie Tolliver of Energy Fitness for Homes in Cincinnati, who asked in a comment, hey, are you gonna do a blow order test without the windows installed? And yeah, I am. If you ask, we're, we're all constantly answering. We'd like to do tests. If you have a specific thing you'd like to know, please do reach out. Please subscribe to our channel so you can see, keep seeing what the tiny lab is gonna do before we take it on the road for the Proof is Possible tour. And I hope that you do come and see us when we go to the 20 cities in 2016. Thanks for watching. Tune in next time. What will I think of this time? Oh.